This is BBC Wales. And so to the first of our Christmas Day programmes as we celebrate Christmas at St David's. That's a big one. Can you manage into the sack? Right, she won't go in. Oh, <laughs> go my best. <laughs> Now come along everybody, I know it's Christmas, but we must put our backs into it. If you're one of those who would say, yes, I know St. David's, then probably you picture it like this. The way it was about the time this Diary of Britain began, at the beginning of September 1978, before the school holidays ended. Then we were bursting at the seams with holiday makers eager to explore the village and the city, that both are called St. David's, except by the Welsh speakers, for whom this is Ti Ddewi. This huddle of houses and farms around a cathedral that commemorates 14 centuries of Celtic faith, the place of Wales' patron saint. From this most westerly point of the land of Wales came its earliest Christianity, and now come Britain's earliest potatoes. And the lorries are barely off the roads in time for the floods of visitors heading for those sheltered beaches that, though full, are never too crowded. And the locals keep their smiles, even as they fight through crowded lanes after the signal gun calls them to launch the lifeboat. They know that by cold weather time, when the crowds have gone, they've got St. David's to themselves. Glad I wasn't out there today. With more than a week still to Christmas, two local industries are pitched up to the Christmas trade. Reports are that lobsters have reached peak price. Finally, I know it ever will be, see the back of really. It's a high risk keeping all these fish. And those farmers who've been fattening turkeys and geese, chickens and ducks, are preparing the last of them for the market. Oh dear. I'm going to start sneezing in a minute. One way or another, Christmas is in the air. I've noticed that a certain formality of correct address is normal for the Dean of St. David's whenever he's in his official capacity. Allow them, Mr. Archdeacon. What do you think of the choir singing this morning, all right? Very good, very good. Very good. 
What about Sikh communions, man, I can't afford this week? You've got them all in, and you're going to the Old People's Centre yes, to give them the their usual centre. Now lunchtime headlines on Radio Wales. At ports and airports in Wales, intense security measures following the explosions this morning in several English cities, thought to be the work of the provisional IRA. In Fishguard, detectives will work round the clock in case those... But events in other parts of the country have little concern for the ladies of Menevia Women's Institute preparing for the dress rehearsal of their pantomime. Makeup and costume require skill, of course, but there's room for inventiveness as well. This is Catherine Simpson's first time as producer. In working hours, she's receptionist in Dr. Middleton's surgery. There's quite a lot of Dr. Middleton in this production. His wife, cheerfully performing as an ugly sister, is Catherine's reliable right hand. I've got to go now. Even his daughter is part of the cow. The back part, I think. Take it off. It's worth trying to get it right. With a little verve and practice, even age-old chestnuts will bloom again. He said it would grow very quickly. He said it would grow very quickly. That's better. When it's fully grown, I'll pick it for you. But suppose someone else picks it first. Oh, yes. I know. I'll ask these people down here to keep an eye on it for us. I say, would you do that? Yes! And if anybody comes and takes it, you shout buttons as loud as you can, and I'll come and stop them. Let's try it, shall we? Christmas Day minus seven, and I am working hard on my latest. I enjoy being an artist here in St. David's, and I take it as a compliment when someone peers in to see what John Rogers is painting now. The folk I meet, particularly amongst the farmers and especially their richly various faces, provide more inspiration than I've time to use. like Darrant Rees, who lives nearby in a collection of houses that look as though they've always been part of the landscape. It's a scene I just had to paint. And the geese that you see are an incidental part of a visit my wife Dee is making here today. Hello, Di. Hello. How are you? I brought the walking aid for your sister. All right, thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. John wants to know if we can have a goose this Christmas. Oh, well, I think these are too old for them. Oh, are they? They yes. are a bit big, aren't they? Yes. Oh, I, he said I left it too late. We'll yes. have to try and get one somewhere else. Oh, yes. I'll get the walking aid then. Oops, OK. Good morning, Miss Reese. Good morning. How are you? Well, that's too bad, but this cold weather... Isn't yes, it? it's very cold, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes. Providing a simple handrail or an adapted unit for a disabled person, yeah. it's well, all work for an occupational therapist. Here we are, then. Now, how do you manage to get up? Yes, that's right. Can. Up we come. Yes. Contact with the local doctors and district nurses is very important. There are 14 GPs in my patch, Dr. Middleton is one of them, of course, 
and he's giving a Christmas sherry party tonight. Did you see that in the paper? Poor old Father Christmas. He, he was told, he was taken up by the police because he was called an obstruction. Are you wanted to do over Christmas, Doctor? Well, one's always, unfortunately, as the girls know, was sort of more or less on duty, and uh, we important thing to do, that is, to make sure that somebody owes on the um, telephone. Well, Things are quite unpredictable. Yeah. Yes. Oh, just a moment, please. Christmas Day, minus six, and Bill Morris, the verger, is giving a little help to Sister Constance from the Priory. It's her turn this year to build a Christmas crib in the cathedral. The Anglican communities are little known about, she finds, even amongst some clergy. Bill, I was in retreat yesterday and didn't hear the television news. And this morning at the Eucharist, the priest prayed for the victims of bomb explosions. Have there been any more? Oh, yes. I think there was one in Bristol and Southampton. And there were four cars with bombs in them. Three of them were blown up. And there's another one that they're still looking for. And they don't know where it is. And they're a bit anxious about it. They haven't found it yet. It could blow up anywhere. Yes, anyway. The three of them have already gone. We'll have to put that on the prayer list. It's nearly finished now, except for the bambino. A waste of money, honestly, that cost me nearly eight bob. Christmas garlands are a feature here. You'll see them on many doors. They're mostly made at Elsie Chance. She's our local florist, and she makes flower arrangements of many kinds. Oh, Polly, that's yours, dear. Yes. All right, and yes. it's all paid for. Right, thank, thank you, you dear. Much. And yours is done too, Mrs. Uh, that one. Will you take a card from there, Mrs. Oh, Priest? I would have liked you, you to have sent it. Oh, you want me to take it uh, with what, the what time is the funeral, my love? Do you uh, know? Two o'clock in the cemetery. Oh, then, thank you. Then we turn up at the grammar school, quarter past one, isn't it? Oh, what uh, what do you want on the card, oh, dear? With deeper sympathy from Rita and, and Wilfred, please. Nita and, and Wilfred. Wilfred. Right, dear, that one's that then. Yes. I'll do that as soon as I've got a little minute, because I'll yes. serve Mrs. Uh, Davis now. Thank you, Mrs. Now. Thank yes, you, Mrs. Um, Priest. Bye-bye, oh, dear. I can't remember what you ordered now, Mrs. Uh, the spray I ordered, huh? Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sad about Bryn, oh, isn't it? Terrible. Gosh, it was so shop, sudden. Yeah. I was up at Cardiff over the weekend for the International, the All Blacks, and uh, the message came through on the Sunday that poor old Brendan had passed away. But he'd been complaining like the previous months for that, he'd been in hospital. But he'd uh, come much better at the, at the time. So, I mean, the whole village or the city was very shocked to hear that he had passed away so soon. He was years with the Western Welsh as a fitter. He was noted by Bryn the Fitter. There so many of us here in Wales, and, uh, you know, they wouldn't know who you're talking about. When they said Bryn the Fitter, everybody knew him. 
On Saturday, every child in St David's will be round the Christmas tree in the square to get a present from Santa Claus. Are you going to make a list? Oh, no. Oh, and have you told the little ones to bring lanterns now for singing around some yeah, David yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we've got to go around the side yeah. clock. Yeah. And also to be switched on in public is a new Welsh language community newspaper called Pentigilly, a peculiarly Pembrokeshire word that defies simple translation. Full of interest to the Welsh speakers of Tithewi, but I confess I don't have the Celtic tongue. Tonight I'm in the cathedral to do some drawings of one of the stone arches carved over 700 years ago. Twenty-eight or so is entirely drawn from St. David's and since the permanent population is under 2,000 their standard is remarkably high. Try this again with these important dates in mind and get much more attention to detail. Off we go. Mm -hmm. Christmas Day, minus five. Dee said she must call in before work at the shop the tailors run. Andy Taylor plays Prince Charming in the panto. It's about my Christmas present, perhaps. It's a problem, isn't it, yes, knowing what to yes. choose? Who are you looking for, Dee? Um, well, my mother-in-law, the main one, and I also yes. want something for Jeff's girlfriend. I tell you, these new, um, jackets are rather super. The Welsh woolen mills, you know, they've always produced yes. tapestry, and now they've gone for these lovely soft tweeds. Yes, they're beautiful. Lovely soft colours and, you know, nice zips down the front so they're easy for fitting. Yes. How and much is that? Um, the price of that is £19.50. Oh. Morning. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Teller. Morning, Merry Christmas to you. Honey and a cold, can't let you make me come, he's for you. Tomato, I thought, my new girl, the seven, wow, my toy, son, and 
Dyna Seven Fawr i Bethlehem. Dyma anregion i'r baban bach. Dyma air. Dyma this. Dyma mer. Just feeling weak or any pain or anything? What, in his stomach? Yes, all right. Dr. Middleton will come after surgery. All right? Oh, it's getting on fairly well, but I'll talk to you about that later. Oh, I do wish they wouldn't talk about pantomime in the middle of surgery. in the most beautiful dress of all. All that is needed is a spell of mice and tomcat, pumpkin too, a golden coach, a wish come true. WI ladies put into the panto is quite enormous. No wonder it's only put on every other year. And now the cows dance, as perfect as it's ever going to be. Be a good girl. Come along, Daisy. Come along. Now then. It's milking time, Daisy. Our panto pulls big crowds. Anyway, apart from the pubs and a few clubs, there's little else here for entertainment. The nearest cinema's 15 miles away, and the theatre 20. And tonight, two of our television channels are blacked out. Come, let me dance such ideas out of your head. So this is love, so this is love, so this is what makes life divine. I'm all alone, and now I know that we do. Doing the panto was great fun and I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it did take up a lot of time and I'm very busy at home preparing for Christmas. I don't think I've even iced my cake yet. I've lived in St. David's three times in my life. 
I still feel that out of all the places that I have lived in, St. David's has a very special meaning, particularly at Christmas time. I find it a very friendly place. Oh, well introduced. Yes, I and with Christmas four days away, all the shops are busy with last-minute shoppers. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I have that. Let me so we can see what, what's going on over Christmas. No, that's 1895 on Hannah Nate. Oh, I see. Okay. This is Chant. Do you want your papers yet? Yes, my love, please. Oh, what in the heck have you got here now? That's a Welshman, isn't it? I've been drinking. Oh, it feels nice on the front there. Yeah. There you are. There's a lovely one at Billy. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Well, I can't read that, my love. Well, I'll have to come in and teach you, won't I? Welsh-born, and yet I can't uh, speak Welsh, and still, there we are. Right. Mr. Birmingham, how are you? I've ordered a uh, Western Telegraph, please. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Thank you. Hope you have a merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Birmingham. Merry Christmas, Stu. Now, Dolly, how are you? Very happy Christmas, Stu. And to all your family. Thank you very much. Have a very nice time. Bye-bye. Oh, Mrs. Davis, good morning. Oh, good morning. Very nice um, to see you. Some last-minute Christmas cards I wanted to Last-minute Christmas cards. Well, yes. they're really in front of you here. Mrs. Sifield, that I want to send to. Um, oh, we've got Welsh ones. Most of the land around St. David's is farmed by Welsh-speaking families. The Davises run Hendray, with a concentration of cattle and milk, and spuds in the spring. Meanwhile, back in the village... I brought you some more wine, in case you haven't got enough for the punch. Oh, thank you. Can what? you put it somewhere? I have to warm the punch later on. What, in fact, have you got in the punch? Well, I've got apple juice. One of the reasons we give a party in Christmas week is acquired a tremendous amount of work during the year. In Christmas week, there are a lot of extra services. There's a nine lessons and carols, there's a midnight mass, there's a sung Eucharist on Christmas Day at 8 o'clock in the morning. And in addition to that, it's very popular in St. David's that the choir go round carol singing. And one of the ways that I am able to bring pressure to bear on them to come and do this is by giving a party first. Right, Mark, can you begin to stuff the last bit of high down class and uh, clear the vocal cords for the singing? <laughs> keep, a, you can keep a drink, sir. As long as you don't put it in the harp score, put it out somewhere. And in the Christmas in three days, and I'm visiting Mr. Morgan, or William George, as he's known to everybody here, hoping at last for my Christmas goose. Beautiful, beautiful, marvellous. Oh, one room thick. <laughs> so I was very pleased that you had this goose, because uh, it's, right, it's too late for me to get one anywhere else, and a, a farm goose is much better than... One from the frozen one from the shops. William George prefers the old style of life and farming. Not for him electricity and all those other conveniences we regard as essential. Now, Beautiful. That's lovely. That's a really big one. Oh, I'm really pleased about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's, that's marvellous. Can you get it in? Head first. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, I am pleased about that. That is a big one, too. Really heavy. With a best I had. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you very much. Well, cheerio. Cheerio. The Bishop's Palace is a majestic ruin. Restoration work of some kind is going on at St. David's all through the year, and the city is very jealous of its treasures. Not that we haven't got some light industry here. 
though it can't be that long before it stops for the holiday. Some time ago in Bethlehem, though the Holy Bible says, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born. OK, boys and girls, let's go up the rugby club. Happy Christmas to all of you. Happy Christmas. But Christmas isn't just a booze-up and a commercial spree. Now, you all have something to do. Paul, I want you to be the cross-bearer. Stephen and Wayne, the acolytes. Uh, Kirion and Arion, you're the uh, Thorifer and boat bearer. So, will you get into procession now? For many people, the coming days will be busy, but full of joy. The Catholics, for instance, will be celebrating Midnight Mass in their retreat by the sea. Right, Paul first. Christmas is only just round the corner. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And a very Happy Christmas to all of you. You're listening to the BBC Radio All Network Service. Stay with us because now it's over to the Network News Desk and Jan Leeming. There's been a development this evening over the BBC pay strike which has stopped the corporation's television transmissions and disrupted radio programmes. The Central Arbitration Committee have announced an interim pay award to enable some BBC pay to catch up with that of ITV. A big police hunt is going on around Motherwell near Glasgow following a reported sighting of a white opal car similar to the one being sought after the recent wave of IRA bombings. The fears of a petrol shortage over the holiday. The message from the Motor Agents Association is buying more than you need could spoil somebody else's Christmas. Saturday and two days to go. The weather seems likely to spoil our Christmas. It's raining and the wind is getting up. In the village, the ovens are switched off in the bakery of Dye the Crust, now Dye Upper Crust, since he met Prince Charles, and goodies are put in to cook in the falling heat. Time now. What's the time now? Five to twelve, Edward. Yes. Yeah, we are. Betty, have you seen the weather outside? It's pouring with rain and the wind is dreadful. Betty, I tell you, I'm very concerned about the Father Christmas coming to the square this afternoon. The children are going to get soaking wet and very cold. Now, do you think it would be a good idea if we had it in the City Hall instead? Can you pass messages on to the rest of the committee to decorate the hall up? Because it's completely bare at the moment. <laughs> <coughs> when the ladies of St David's get down to it, it takes very little time to transform the City Hall and their efforts save the day because the weather outside is becoming more and more unsuitable for Father Christmas.
now it's Christmas Eve. Good evening. Hello, Mr. Um, what corpse would you like me to put up tonight for the nine Well, the Archdeacon's got his own. Yes. Uh, the minor colonel will wear the golden one, and I'll wear the general purpose coat Perfect. in honour. Yes. 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 And uh, the oil has come, I see. Yes, last night. So at least we'll have a bit of heat in the cathedral. Yes. Seeing as we are at Christmas time, all this goodwill and peace amongst men. If you ask me, there's not much of it about it there. At Christmas, the colour of all the fabrics in the cathedral is changed from sombre purple or violet to white and gold. So the altar frontals, the pulpit falls, the copes and vestments of the priests, all are changed after the Welsh and English services in the morning. Mostly it's the job of Bill Morris, who has the double duty of verger to the cathedral and coxswain of St. David's lifeboat. I'm a full-time coxswain, not in the sense that I'm paid for it. My bread and butter work, if you can put it that way, is being the verger, but I'm still available as a coxswain for 24 hours a day for 50 weeks of the year. In my time, we've had one or two other nerve-wracking experiences. It's more frightening before you go out, thinking of what might be, what situations you have to get into, but once you're there, the only time that you're frightened you're only thinking of yourself, thinking of saving your own skin. Even at Christmas time, if we get any notices to mariners, we usually try and get them down on the chart. Some are more important than others, but even at Christmas time, we'd still do it. Right, people.
faith of Christ and in thy name, O God most holy, do we hallow this crib of Christmas to set before the eyes of thy children the great love and humility of Jesus Christ, and only Son, to whom we be, be all honor, majesty, glory, and worship, now and world without end. Amen. in the retreat by the sea, the same event is being celebrated in a slightly different way. So, Christmas. And it's a day with a lot of pictures for me. Mr. Davis, up early, as on any other day, for the milking. His chapel, like the others, singing its heart out. And very nearly the same voices back at Hendray for his Christmas party, lubricated by a particularly potent home brew. Christmas dinner with family that would have once again put Ruth Davis to the test and found her once again come up trumps. The way he watched the Queen's Christmas message and missed the sound of music. Never mind, nine more chances to go. For the doctor, an almost relaxed Christmas. For William George, a feed for his cattle then off for Christmas with family outside St. David's. And in the two big hotels, a little flood of visitors letting others do the work. And for me, my goose, and my family all together for Christmas. Oh, it looks gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, that's Hungry? But if I have to sum it up, the picture of them all, it had its counterpart across Britain, was as a child woke up to see what Father Christmas had brought. Christmas will always be a time for children.